Story 28 of Uncle Wiggily's Travels. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Stacy Cologne. Uncle Wiggily's Travels by Howard Roger Garris. Story 28 Uncle Wiggily and the Berry Bush. "'Well, children, I think I will soon have to be leaving you,' said Uncle Wiggily Long Ears one morning to the three Wibblewobbles when he had stayed all night at their Aunt Letty's house. That was after the old gentleman rabbit had found the three ducks lost in the woods, you remember, and had taken them to where they were visiting the old lady goat. "'I must pack my valise and travel on,' said Uncle Wiggily. "'Oh, can't you stay a little longer?' asked Alice Wibblewobble as she tied her sky-blue pink hair ribbon in a flopsy dub kind of a bow knot yes do stay urged jimmy as he tossed up his ball which lulu his sister caught we'll have some fun together and you can play on my ball team uncle wiggily oh i'm much too old for that said the rabbit though i like to watch you play besides i have the rheumatism and i have to keep on looking for my fortune so i will travel forward once more well if you must go i suppose you must said aunt letty the old lady goat but at least let me put you up a little lunch let me see what shall it be i think a tomato can sandwich and some brown paper cake with paste frosting on would be nice and then too i can give you some fine wooden pie oh excuse me exclaimed the rabbit but while it is very kind of you i cannot eat such things i never could chew a tomato can nor yet a wooden or even a sawdust pie no more you could cried aunt letty in confusion i was thinking of what i like to eat very well I will give you some carrots and cabbage and a piece of cherry pie. I know you will like those. So she made Uncle Wiggily that kind of a lunch, and he put it in his valise, and after saying goodbye to the old lady goat and the three wibblewobbles, off he started to seek his fortune once more. On and on he traveled up some hills and down others and through the woods, and pretty soon he came to a place where there was a big hole in the ground. Aha! exclaimed the rabbit. Perhaps this is a gold mine. I will get some gold dollars out of it, and then I'll be rich. So he went close to the hole, and he looked down it. But all of a sudden, out popped a great big rat, and she gnashed her teeth at Uncle Wiggily and tried to bite him. What are you doing at my house? She cried real savagely. Get away at once before I eat you. Indeed I will, said the rabbit politely. I thought your hole was a gold mine. Excuse me. I'll get right along. So he hopped away as fast as he could hop, very thankful that he had not gone down the hole. Well, the next place he came to was where a great big stone was sticking out of the side of a hill, and the stone glittered in the sunshine just like diamonds or dewdrops. Oh, how delightful, cried the rabbit. This surely is a gold stone. I will break off some pieces of it and take them home, and then I will have my fortune. So taking his crutch, Uncle Wiggily tried to break off pieces of the glittering stone. But my goodness me, sakes alive and a chocolate ice cream cone. That stone was very hard. And try as he did, Uncle Wiggily couldn't break off a piece, even as big as Baby's tiny pink toe. I'll just sing a little song, and then perhaps I can get some of the gold, he said. So he sang the song, which goes to the tune of Tiddly Um Tum Tum. My fortune I found on top of the ground, I'm lucky as lucky can be. But really, this stone is hard as a bone, I wish that someone would help me. After singing, Uncle Wiggily hammered away at the stone with his crutch again, but the song did no good. And then, all at once, before you could shake your finger at a pink pussy cat, out from behind the glittering stone there jumped the savage Wushkiwashki, which is a very curious beast, with two tails, three heads, and one crinkly leg so that it has to go hippity hop or else fall down ker thump. What are you doing to my stone? cried the Wushkiwashki. Oh, excuse me, said Uncle Wiggily politely. I didn't know it was your stone. I was only trying to break off a small piece for my fortune wow oh wow cried the wishki-washki as savage as savage could be and he gnashed his teeth in all three of his mouths and he lashed his two tails on the ground i'm going to catch you he called to the rabbit not if i know it you won't catch me said uncle wiggily bravely and off he hopped down the hill yes i will catch you cried the wishki-washki and off he hopped on his one crinkly leg after the rabbit faster and faster hopped uncle wiggily but still faster and faster hopped the wishki-washki Oh, he'll surely catch me, thought the rabbit. I wonder what I can do. I know. I'll open my valise and I'll scatter on the ground my nice lunch that Aunt Letty put up for me. And the wishki-washki will stop to eat the good things and then I can get away. So the rabbit did this. 
Out on the ground from the valise tumbled all the nice carrot and lettuce sandwiches. But the savage wooshki washki gobbled them up with three mouthfuls and didn't stop popping after Uncle Wiggily on his one crinkly leg. Oh, he'll surely catch me now, cried the rabbit. No, he won't. Jump up in the air and come down inside of me, cried a voice. And Uncle Wiggily saw a nice blackberry bush waving its long arms at him. Jump down inside of me where there are no thorns to scratch you, said the berry bush. But if the wooshki washki tries to come after you, I'll scratch his six eyes out. I'll save you. Jump down inside me. Thank you, I will, said the rabbit, and he gave a big spring and a hop over the outer edge of the bush, and down he landed safely inside of it, not scratched a bit. Up came the three-headed, two-tailed, and one crinkly-legged wooshki-washki. But when he saw the prickly briarberry bush, he stopped short, for he did not want his eyes scratched out. Come out of there, cried the wooshki-washki to the rabbit. Indeed I will not, said Uncle Wiggily politely. Then I'll stay here forever, and you can't ever come out, said the savage creature. For if you come out, I'll eat you. Don't let him scare you, said the briarberry bush to Uncle Wiggily. I'll fix him. So the berry bush reached out a long arm all covered with stickers, and she stickered and prickered the wooshki washki on his three heads and two tails and one leg, so that the savage creature ran away howling and Uncle Wiggily was safe. And not hurt a bit, I'm glad to say. So he stayed in the briar bush that night and had berries for breakfast. And the next day he had another adventure. What it was, I will tell you on the page after this one, when the bedtime story will be about Uncle Wiggily and the campfire. That is, if the cat across the street doesn't untie the pink ribbon off our pussy's neck and put it on his ice cream cone. End of Uncle Wiggily and the Berry Bush